Welcome everyone and thanks for joining us. This is Amy Schleicher, Livestock Field Specialist with University of Missouri Extension. And again, welcome you to our conversation and program this morning. So there's no doubt about it, the beef industry is facing a lot of challenges and uncertainty relative to the impacts of COVID-19. And knowing how to move forward in these challenges is a, a challenge in itself. So here with me today to share his expertise on the economic issues facing the industry is Dr. Scott Brown, and he's an associate extension professor in the Division of Applied Social Sciences in the College of Ag, Food, and Natural Resources at the University of Missouri. Scott, welcome, and thanks for being with me this, this morning. Yeah, thanks, Amy, for doing this. So Scott, why don't we start with an update on what's happened in the, in the beef industry uh, that's impacting markets right now? Well, certainly, you know, we can spend our time talking about the effects of COVID-19. And, and I remind us, you know, if you backed up the tape a little bit and said, where was the cattle industry headed for 2020? Uh, we were talking about the possibility for higher cattle prices uh, and, and not now what we see uh, happening in the marketplace. You look at uh, fed cattle prices that have been below a dollar for the last several weeks, that, that's certainly uh, uh, not what producers anticipated uh, coming in. And, and again, to me, a lot of that is associated with just what's been uh, a, a packing industry that has certainly struggled as they face COVID-19 outbreaks in some of those plants that have required slowdowns and, and shuttering. So, uh, uh, you know, that's much of where we sit with just uh, a, a price outlook that's uh, dismal relative to what we would have thought uh, going into COVID-19. So, Scott, what are some of the things that producers can keep an eye out for as we move forward that may have may have an infact, uh, impact on the markets? Yes, yeah, so I, th I think number one uh, here in the very short run, and I say short run, I hope in the next two or three weeks and, and we'll be beyond this is in fact what we're doing in terms of uh, uh, average daily slaughter. Uh, I, I use the data of, of kind of pre-COVID-19 outbreak. We were kind of slaughtering 105,000 head a day on average. We actually bumped up to about 115,000 for a brief period of time uh, right as COVID-19 began to, to uh, be an issue. And I think that was processors uh, understanding some of these plants were going to be an issue and they pushed as hard as they could uh, while they were fully functional. But, but you look at where we sit last week and we fell below 80,000 head. Um, that, that slowdown is creating a backlog of, of cattle uh, that are ready for slaughter. Uh, we need some turnaround in that or at least we certainly don't need it to continue to accelerate to the downward side. That, that's a scenario we just don't want to talk about. I, I always like to remind folks that even though we're below 80,000 head, that's not that far from where we were back in 2015 in terms of slaughter numbers. The growth we've seen in the cattle industry uh, certainly pushed us to, to higher slaughter numbers, but I think plant uh, cl closures in the short run are it. Uh, second for me, which could actually be the big positive here, is just when we begin to see uh, some of these uh, restaurants maybe open up, where, you know, we're seeing states that are beginning to talk about uh, coming back online. Uh, I could see a real uh, increase in food service demand coming if we continue to successfully uh, open different parts of the economy without a return of additional COVID-19 cases. So th those are a couple of things I'm looking at here in the next uh, couple of weeks that I think are, are going to be important to where we head going forward. So, you know, thinking about um, there's just a lot of this that's um, really out of producer's control and it's, it's tough. And just thinking about, you know, now and as we move forward, how can producers try to mitigate some risk as we do go forward? What are our options there? Yeah, Amy, you ask a really good question and I wish I had a better answer. I think here in the short run, you know, traditional ways to mitigate cattle price risk or not very attractive given where futures markets are. Um, so, so I think in many ways it's now how don't, long do we want to hold on to some calves that maybe otherwise we would have gotten rid of. You know, what are the options in terms of flexible marketing, trying to hope that we get to where we can see some higher prices. So I think that's mm -hmm. kind of that whole idea of I can't use futures markets right now, so how do I physically decide 
to market those cattle in a way that works on risk management. However, I will say if we get some positive news in the next, and, and I'll kind of say four to six weeks, I, I've been talking to producers about what makes you pull the trigger to use price risk tools. What, what level of cattle futures uh, prices would, would make you go, hey, that number one returns a, a profit. And um, secondly, uh, I, I would pull the trigger. Now's the time to be thinking about those because I have a hunch if we were to get a run in futures markets higher, a, a lot of producers would sit there and go, um, I thought I would lock here, but now I'm not going to because I think prices are going to continue to move higher. I, I just say there's issues with, I see some positives, but maybe those don't last forever. So you want to take advantage of the opportunities if they were to come. So with some of these risk management strategies, thinking about them, um, you know, it seems like every year we've got some kind of challenge that happens, whether it's drought or whatever, you know, just thinking about risk manage management moving forward, are these things that you would suggest, you know, regardless of the, the year or the, the challenge? What are the, is that a good idea? So, so I think there are times where risk management can play a very valuable tool. I will say all the time, some operations uh, probably could use more risk management than others. It, it kind of depends on uh, how much risk that operation can face before it becomes financially in peril. Um, some of them are, are probably pretty well healed in terms of the, the financial side of the picture and maybe being self-insured is an okay strategy. I just remind us, so hindsight's 2020 here, but I remind us that we could have locked in some fairly good prices early in, in 2020 for the remainder of the year. And I don't think many producers took advantage of that. So uh, I, I would always say it's not a zero one alternative, by the way. I might be willing to lock in a, a portion of those cattle uh, earlier, but I probably wouldn't ever do 100% right out of the gate. We just don't tend to see that same level level of risk management being used in the livestock side generally. And I think that's something that's gonna have to change as we move forward. Well, thank you, Scott. Are there any other uh, helpful resources you would recommend to folks or how can they follow you and your work as we, as we move forward? <clears throat> yeah, so I, I, I think number one, uh, so every Friday, uh, if uh, they were to Google uh, weekly livestock update brownfield. Uh, I cut every Friday what's been happening in livestock markets. So that's one easy place for them to follow. Um, otherwise, I, I just will say here in the very short run, paying attention to this plant closing information is the critical piece uh, that, that they should be paying uh, close attention to as they try to market cattle. Okay, that sounds good. Well, Scott, thanks again for visiting with me today and always appreciate your expertise and insight. It's, it sure is helpful and, and we appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you, Amy. So thanks everyone for joining us today uh, with this program from University of Missouri Extension. And I hope you'll join us next time. Thank you.